YouTube is one of the most underutilized platforms by many digital marketers. Despite many statistics clearly showing the profitability of video marketing, even many of the web's preeminent digital marketers are shy to get involved. Why is this? Simple. Many marketers who are working from home lack the resources, the know-how or the confidence to get involved with video marketing. But you know what? That's exactly why you need to get involved and why you need to learn how to use this crucial tool. Leaving the statistics to one side for a moment, video marketing is incredibly valuable simply because it allows you to change the way that others perceive your business. When you create a great video with high production values, you make your organization feel far more professional, stable and resourceful. Instead of looking like you're some guy writing articles from his mum's basement, you'll now look like a real business complete with high production values and a professional sheen that inspires trust and confidence in your brand. At the same time, video marketing also has some other advantages. For example, it's highly engaging beyond what you can achieve with a written advert or even a blog post. Think about how often you've sat up all night watching TV programs that you weren't really interested in simply because it was too difficult to turn off and turn your attention away from them. Videos combine sound, music, images and clever editing and they let us speak directly to the audience. If you're a digital marketer with a personal brand and you're trying to gain the trust and familiarity of your audience, then going on video and letting them meet you in that way is incredibly valuable. Likewise though, if you're a large corporation and you want to show off your products, then being able to put them on the screen and show them being used will make it much easier for your audience to understand them and to see the appeal and the value proposition. Think about what you'd be more likely to buy. Something you heard described in a piece of text or something you could see being held up to the camera, being used and shot in dynamic, flattering lighting. Add in some great music to underscore the value of the item and a great persuasive sales script and you can make anything seem incredibly desirable. And one of the most effective forms of video marketing available to any internet marketer is YouTube advertising. YouTube is a massive platform and provides incredible reach to a vast range of different users across the world. The only downside is that it's also very difficult to get noticed through YouTube. As with running a blog, creating a YouTube channel means competing with millions of other content creators and saturation in almost every niche imaginable. This is where YouTube advertising comes in. Using a YouTube advertising campaign, you can ensure that millions of people see your video instantly. This can then be used to directly sell a product, to drive traffic to your website, or even to drive traffic to a YouTube channel. In other words, YouTube advertising allows you to quickly skip the hard work normally associated with building your channel, and instead get straight to the part where you begin getting huge exposure and building your brand. In case you're not yet convinced that YouTube is the platform for you, it may help to look at some of the incredible statistics surrounding the video sharing site. For instance, did you know that YouTube has over 1 billion users? That makes it absolutely massive and to put it in perspective, it's nearly a third of everyone on the internet. Every single day, these users watch hundreds of millions of hours of video on the channel. And on mobile alone, YouTube manages to reach more 18 to 34 year olds and 18 to 49 year olds than any cable network in the US. So in other words, if you were thinking of spending money on a video advertising campaign, then your money would actually be much better spent on YouTube advertising. This is especially true too, considering that YouTube advertising is far more affordable. Think these numbers are impressive now? Then you'll be even more impressed to learn that the user base is still growing exponentially. In fact, it grows by more than three times year on year. That means that there will likely be three times as many users by the end of next year. Between March 2014 and January 2016, the number of users on YouTube increased by a whopping 40%. These users are also spread throughout the world, which is great if you have an international product. 
80% of YouTube viewers come from outside the US. In fact, the channel is available in over 76 different languages. More than half of YouTube's views are from mobile devices, but it's also worth taking into consideration just how popular YouTube is across a range of other devices as well. YouTube can be enjoyed on TVs and even on games consoles, so it's available even in households without computers or smartphones. People don't just use YouTube for entertainment either. They also use it for looking up information and getting answers to questions. YouTube is commonly used just like Google as a search engine and is in fact the second largest search engine after Google in terms of the numbers of searches. For all these reasons, YouTube actually controls the flow of 17% of all internet traffic. And advertisers and creators are profiting greatly from all this success. Partner revenue has been increasing by 50% year on year, and channels earning six figures a year from YouTube have also increased by the same amount. Adoption of YouTube advertising is growing too. The numbers of advertisers using YouTube has increased by 40% each year, and the average spend for the top 100 advertisers has increased by 60%. What does all this tell us? Well, for now, it tells us that YouTube advertising still isn't oversaturated. There's still a place here, and especially for internet marketers. If you use YouTube marketing to show videos of your new ebook or your self development blog, then you'll be one of the few marketers using it that way currently. This in turn means that you can stand out and get attention, and you can get great prices and excellent ROI for your campaign. Similarly though, it also shows you that companies already using YouTube advertising are profiting from it and are thus reinvesting more money into it. Did you know that every single one of the top 100 global brands have run YouTube adverts in the last year? True view adoption is growing too, and it grew by 45% over 2014. This is the perfect time to set up an account and to start reaching a bigger audience. So, without a doubt, YouTube advertising is one of the absolute best ways to engage with your audience, to drive traffic, to generate profit, and to grow your brand. But you may still be feeling apprehensive. Perhaps you're unsure as to whether you have what it takes to create videos of a professional quality, or maybe you don't know how to go about using the platform. Perhaps you're concerned about the amount of money you'll need to spend. Don't be. This is where these videos will come in handy and will show you the ropes and everything you need to learn in order to start making the most from YouTube advertising. Throughout the course, you'll learn how to create stunning videos that have a professional quality without spending a huge amount of money. At the same time, you'll learn about key phrases and how to get maximum exposure with minimum spend. You'll learn the ins and the outs of the different options available for creating YouTube ads, and you'll learn how to integrate your advertising campaign with a great YouTube channel for maximum exposure. While the number of internet marketers currently using YouTube to its fullest is still quite slim, there are nevertheless some great examples of people who are making a lot of money from it. One example is the very visible Mike Chang from Six Pack Shortcuts, who uses a ton of advertising to drive visitors to his channel and to his information products. One of his most recent videos involved him stuffing his face as much as he could to demonstrate how his training methods don't require you to starve yourself. The video is actually quite unpleasant to watch and is certainly fairly controversial. Both of these things work in Mike's favour, however, as both of these things mean people are more likely to watch and to click through to see what the channel is all about. Remember, these videos will normally show just before fitness and bodybuilding videos that the user has clicked on, and this is a great way for them to grab attention. In some of his other YouTube ads, Mike will talk about free techniques that you can use as a reader to lose weight or to build muscle. To see the free technique, you need to click on the ad and get directed to another video. This brings people to the Six Pack Shortcuts brand and is what is known as a sales funnel. Gradually, 
viewers engage more and more with the brand until eventually they're willing to pay for the product. Another example is Ty Lopez. Now, if you spend much time on YouTube, then you'll no doubt have seen him talking about how he earned his Lamborghini in his garage. Once again, the video is fairly ostentatious and controversial, and some people will be put off by it. Either way, though, viewers end up watching, and this technique has allowed Ty to very quickly grow his channel to 406 or more thousand viewers. It's actually doubtful, though, whether that Lamborghini is even his. You don't need to be so on-the-nose controversial or deceptive to make a splash, though. Equally successful is the fitness channel, Athean X, which promotes training like an athlete. In the advertising campaign for this channel, owner Jeff Cavalier actually actively challenges the methods of advertisers like Mike Chang and positions himself as the more grounded and scientific alternative. The techniques you'll learn here will enable you to emulate the success these content creators have and even to surpass them with your own products and channels. To get started with your advertising, you'll first need to create your account. These days, YouTube is integrated very closely with Google and with Google+. That means that the easiest way to sign in is just to log into your Google account. From there, you'll have the option to create a specific YouTube account. Now, I've already done that, so let's just come into my YouTube account. Now, to create a YouTube channel, you come over here to the little icon that's got your picture on it or your logo or however you set it up on Google and you click on that and then click here where it says Creator Studio and then simply follow the on-screen instructions to set up a new channel. It's all fairly self-explanatory. Now, once you've got all your channels created, you'll be able to find them here on this little drop-down. And at the same time, you'll be able to see your Google Plus accounts all listed underneath. So if you want to create a new channel for your Google Plus page, then you can do it by clicking on these. This means that if you have a business on Google Plus, you can easily create a channel for that business and have your accounts linked. Either way, you need to be on Google Plus in order to use YouTube and in order to be able to add comments, etc. When you create your channel, you'll either use the name associated with your Google Plus account or you'll create a new name that's relevant to your brand and that's easy for your visitors to find and to understand. You may choose to create multiple channels, one for your brand and one for yourself as a personal user. Alternatively, you might choose to create multiple channels for each of your products. For instance, you might want to create one channel for your brand and another for your app. For example, Microsoft has a Microsoft account, as well as a Surface account, and a Windows account, and so on. Take a look over the terms and conditions, and once you're happy with the name of your channel, then you can click Done to go ahead and publish the channel. And we'll continue this video in Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. Once you have created your channel, the next step is to create some content for it and to add some information. In case you were wondering, your YouTube channel and your advertising campaign are going to be intimately linked so that when users click on your ads, they will very often be taken to your account page. This means you should make sure that your page is ready to receive said visitors before you start creating your ads. When people visit your channel, they'll see a number of different headings and features that will tell them about your brand. One of the most important things here, for instance, is your description, which will simply explain what your channel is all about and why people should stick around. And you can see you can find it here under the About tab. The first part of this also shows when someone does a search in YouTube and your channel shows up in the listings. Now, this is important for SEO or search engine optimization. In other words, the text that you include in the description will be at least partly responsible for helping you achieve more visibility in searches, both on Google and through YouTube itself, like I was just saying. 
So make sure then to think about what the most relevant keywords are for your topic and what you can include to encourage more people to find your channel. Likewise, you can also link to your social media and your website and you can feature some other channels that you like. All of this will help your brand to grow. By linking to your website, for instance, you'll be able to drive traffic that way and thereby increase the number of people engaging with your brand. Meanwhile, linking to your website and confirming it as yours will also allow you to link to products, etc. directly from videos. As we will see later on, this is a rather useful feature for any marketer. At the same time, linking to your social media will help you to drive even more traffic and will make it easier for you to build a cohesive brand across multiple platforms. One of the adages you'll most commonly hear with regards to internet marketing and social media marketing is to be everywhere. Make sure you are in as many places as possible by creating a consistent brand on every platform that you can find online. This branding should extend as well to your cover image and to your profile picture. The profile picture here is going to be the same as it is for your Google Plus account, so make sure that this is something that accurately reflects your brand and your niche and that looks the part for your channel. The cover image, meanwhile, can be anything you choose, but a good bet is to put a logo of some sort in front and to make sure this logo is the same across all of your channels, you know, your social media and so on. As you create more content for your channel, you'll find that you're also able to add playlists of your videos, which will make it easier for videos to find the type of information they're looking for. And they'll be able to find it here under the playlist tab. Another useful feature is the ability to create a video that will promote your channel and will play whenever anyone visits the page. Here you can create a montage of your best content or just talk to your visitors and explain what they can stand to learn by visiting your channel and why they should keep coming back. Until you do this, visitors will simply see a list of your recently added videos. Depending on the strategy you intend to employ with your YouTube advertising, you also need to create some content and start uploading videos. The ads you create are likely going to drive visitors to your channel and so you want to have some great content here waiting for them when they arrive. We'll go into depth onto how to create high quality videos on a shoestring budget later in this series. For now though, all you need to know is that your videos need to be high quality and they need to provide value. Don't worry about trying to sell or monetize just yet. What's most important is that you build a following and that you gain the trust of your visitors. The best way to do that is to fill yourself with interesting and unique content that people will want to view and that will encourage them to subscribe. The more quality and value you provide, the more people will be interested in buying from you when you eventually come to sell something. Next, you need to link your AdWords account to your YouTube account. This is the crucial step for YouTube advertising, and until you do this, your advertising and your YouTube will be separate entities from one another. Once you link the two, you'll not only be able to take part in YouTube advertising, but you'll also have the option to see more statistics for your video, such as earned videos. You'll be able to control features like CTA overlays, more on this later, and remarketing. In order to link these two accounts, you need to sign into YouTube and then click here where it says my channel and this will take you to your main channel administration page here. Then you want to click here where it says video manager. Then down here on the left hand side, come here to where it says channel and click that and then come down to where it says advanced and click on that then scroll down to where it says link an AdWords account and click on that and you'll be walked through the process of linking your channel and your AdWords account. Of course before you do this you'll need to sign up to AdWords and create an account. Alternatively you can link your YouTube channel from within AdWords. 
To do this, you need to sign into your AdWords account and then come up here to where this little cog is and click on that and then come down to where it says linked accounts and click on that. It'll take you to this page. You can see there's a whole lot of different stuff on here, but the one that we're interested in is YouTube. So click here where it says view details. And then you can click on this button here to add a YouTube channel and then simply follow the on-screen instructions. Now, word of caution here, these are the procedures that are in place at the time that I'm making this video. But Google does have a habit of changing things without giving any notice at all. So if when you try to do this, you find that they don't work, simply do a search in Google for link YouTube and AdWords accounts, and it will keep you up to date with the most recent instructions. Okay, so now you've done all that, you're ready to start creating your first campaign and to start promoting a video of your choosing. Follow these steps to learn how easy it is to start promoting your brand with YouTube advertising. But don't do any of it just yet. We're going to go through this process as a learning curve for now, and so that you understand how to get started. You want to see the rest of the videos before you get to work in order to ensure that your ad is going to be as effective as possible and to ensure that you understand the precise workings of how the adverts work. So with this all linked, you'll need to come up with a bidding strategy. Most AdWord campaigns use a CPC or cost per click process, which means that you only pay once the ad has been clicked. With YouTube though, you'll need to use something called CPV. That means cost per view and in turn means that you only pay once the video is viewed all the way through. We'll talk about this a bit more in a moment, but for now, all you need to know is that the amount you bid is the amount that you'll pay for each view. Your bid is your CPV, so it needs to be tied closely to your budget. So, why not just offer the very lowest CPV possible and that way get your ads at the very low price? Well, simple, because there are too many people trying to do the exact same thing and the amount you pay will directly impact on how visible your image is. This is called bidding because that's exactly how it works. You'll select the kind of content that you want your videos to appear on and once you do that, you'll be going up against all the other advertisers in your niche. YouTube will decide which advert to show based upon which of you is paying the most. So this means that you can pay very little and get your adverts shown cheaply, but not very often, or you can pay more and have your adverts seen much more frequently by a bigger audience. Of course, the amount that you're able to pay is likely to be dictated closely by the amount that you stand to earn from each video and how effective your campaign is at driving sales and profits. Something else to recognize about the bidding process is that you won't always pay the maximum amount that you're willing to pay. As with bidding on eBay or at an auction, you're only required to beat the next highest bid. This means that you can set your CPV at 25 cents, but if the next highest bid is 10 cents, you only pay 11 cents. You'll be able to set a budget that you won't go over. This is particularly useful if you have a limited budget, as it guarantees that you won't spend more than you can afford. It also means that you're capped out at a certain amount though. So, if your daily spend is $10 and your CPV is $0.50, cents, then there's a chance that you only get 20 views before your pool runs dry. Unfortunately, there is no golden rule or ideal number to refer to when choosing your ad spend and ultimately the amount you bid will need to come down to your goals and objectives as well as your budget and cash flow. Of course, you can set different bidding amounts for different campaigns though, and this means you can compare how two different campaigns are performing, and you can try different strategies for each. What you also need to do is to generally track the performance of each of your campaigns and to look at how much they're earning and how much you're actually paying per click. You can then tweak the variables in order to make sure you have optimized your strategy. 
All this means you need to think carefully about how to get the most out of your campaign and how to get the most for your money. Another important factor to that end is your targeting. Targeting refers to the way in which your ads will be aimed at a very specific group. Most advertising campaigns will have a particular target audience in mind and your job is to make sure that you're only paying for those specific people to see your ads. If you are a video game developer and the digital product you are selling is an action platform game, then of course you're probably not going to want your adverts to show on videos aimed at hair and makeup. While there may be some overlap, these two interests are very different and generally appeal to different demographics. If you pay for your ad to appear in front of a makeup tutorial, then chances are that you're going to be wasting your money. So instead, you want your video to appear only on relevant content, and in this case, it means that you want it to turn up on videos like Top 10 Games Countdowns, or Let's Play videos, or on video game reviews. Someone watching a review of one video game is much more likely to click on your ad and buy your game. On the other hand, if you're selling an ebook on how to do your makeup perfectly, then you want your videos to appear before makeup tutorials and not before Let's Plays. Targeting helps you to reach your specific target audience, and in turn, this helps you to make more conversions and get a better ROI. But there's more to it than that as well. Targeting also helps you to avoid facing so much competition. And this in turn helps you to win more bids while spending less. Put it this way, if your video is targeting a massive niche like bodybuilding, then you're going to be going up against Mike Chang and Jeff Cavalier, as well as the countless other massive brands. And this means that you'll need to set a very high CPV and your budget will likely run out quickly. But if your video ad is targeting something a lot more specific and niche, let's say food truck businesses, then you can set your budget much lower and set your CPV much lower and still get seen by a lot of people. What's more is that this smaller audience is much more likely to be interested in your product and thus convert into paying customers. To set up topics, you simply choose from a couple of thousand different topics. This is somewhat limited when compared to regular AdWords that let you choose any key phrases that you want. However, in some ways it also gives you a more precise control and it saves time. Some of these categories are going to be fairly broad. These include the likes of beauty and fitness or face and body care. These give you the most exposure but cost the most. But if you dig a little deeper into the subcategories, then you can get more niche by choosing things like face and body care or hygiene and toiletries. Another thing to think about when choosing your niche is just which type of content is most abundant and most successful on YouTube. Some video topics like makeup tutorials and let's play videos come up time and time again, meaning there are more videos for you to appear on and those videos are likely to be higher profile. On the other hand, if you choose something that lends itself less well to videos, like programming, then you'll be appearing on fewer videos. Once you've done all this, you'll then have the option to choose your advert and to set it up. The first thing that you'll need to consider here is which type of advert you're going to use. There's actually multiple options in this regard and some will even allow you to earn money without creating an advert at all. If you want to use traditional text ads, then you can have these appear on top of videos as they play. These look very similar to AdSense adverts, you know, the ads that appear on websites, but are long and horizontal. These only show up on the desktop mine, which means that they won't be visible to the 50% plus of users who view them on mobiles. But then again, desktop users may be more likely to convert for your specific type of content. Overlay ads are a useful way to stand out from the pack and to reach a specific target audience without competing for the overcrowded space on Google search engine results pages, SERPs. That said though, they also don't quite function in the same way as true video ads and don't have the same amount of engagement. Then there are the so-called in-display ads, which show not over the video, but next to it. 
These will appear right next to the feature video. The more common type of ad though is the video ad and this is what this video series is mainly focused on. There are many different types of video ads and these are charged differently but we'll look at this in more detail later on. For now though we'll focus on how you select your ad and set it up. To do this you're basically going to upload the video to your YouTube channel and you can make it unlisted or private so that your subscribers don't get shown it and then you're just going to select it as the video to go with in that campaign. This means that you can actually use any video on your channel as an advert. If you want to, you can have a Let's Play as your ad. Of course, this isn't going to drive many customers to your products though, and it will likely be a waste of money. So instead, you're better off creating a unique video that exists for the sole purpose of being an advert and generating revenue. You also need to select the type of video ad, which in turn will dictate the behavior of the video. You'll learn more about this in the next video. If someone clicks your advert, or if they click the branding that appears around it, then they're going to be taken to a specific destination which should encourage sales and engagement with your brand. It's up to you to choose what this destination is, and it can either be your YouTube channel itself, or it can be another one of your videos. In other cases, you can link with a call to action, which means that you can send them straight through to a landing page or a site where they can buy your product. It's up to you how you want to set this up. If your aim is to increase engagement and to get more views and followers for long-term monetization, then linking them straight to your channel will give them the opportunity to see more of your content and to hopefully become fans or subscribers who can be more likely to buy from you in future. This is advantageous as it can be somewhat difficult to convince people to buy products cold if they've never heard of your brand before. On the other hand though, if you're advertising a vacuum cleaner, then you may be able to say everything you have to say in the video. In that case, sending someone straight to your online store where they can click buy might be the best strategy. Know that you can also pay for a click if someone doesn't watch your video all the way through but they click on the ad, then you're still going to pay for that at the price that you bid. Video ads are of course adverts that are videos in themselves and this means they can be integrated much more seamlessly into the way that YouTube operates. These are the main types of adverts on YouTube and the ones that we're going to be focusing on. Again though, there are actually multiple different types of video ads for YouTube. YouTube calls this True View and aims to give both the user and the advertiser more control over their campaigns as a result. Choose this wisely, as the type of video ad that you choose is also going to impact on the options available for you in terms of your destinations and the cost. An in-stream advert, for instance, is a video that will appear prior to the start of the target video. These pre-roll ads are like the adverts that play in a cinema before the main feature, but there is one key difference that benefits both the advertisers and the users, which is that the videos are skippable. As an advertiser, you can elect to make your video skippable after the first five seconds of the video. If the user clicks skip, then you don't have to pay for the video and the viewer isn't subjected to a message that doesn't relate to them. This makes your content much more targeted because people won't watch a long video all the way through if they're not interested in the subject matter and thus you'll avoid paying for those views. If you're savvy though, you might now be thinking that perhaps there's a way for you to avoid ever paying you know, by making your video 100 minutes long so that no one watched it through to the end. Well, nice try, but actually, so long as viewers stick around for 30 seconds, you'll be paying for a view. An in-slate ad is only a little different to an in-stream ad. The key differentiating factor here is that the advert will be interspersed throughout the video that the users are watching. And this means that your video will appear at preset points during another video that the video creator has chosen. 
This lets the creator set up ad breaks in their content. And it also means that your video is going to appear on longer content rather on short 30 second videos. In search ads, meanwhile, are adverts that appear in the search results above the organic results. These ads normally have a little ad label next to them as well, but otherwise they look like one of the videos on the channel with a little thumbnail. In search ads behave a little differently from other videos on YouTube and from other adverts. This is because clicking on one of them will actually take the user to your YouTube channel where the video will play automatically. You can't then link this to your landing page, unfortunately, so it's less suitable for making direct sales, but much more suitable for creating a large number of subscribers and helping you to build trust and authority with your brand. This is your chance to demonstrate the kind of value and information that you're able to deliver and to show off all the other videos that you have on your channel. You can alternatively set these videos to show simply as regular videos, in which case your visitor will just simply watch them as they would any other video. They'll be able to see more videos from you and your channel name, next to the ad label, in the top right of the screen. When you create in-search video ads, there are a few more things to consider as well. For one, your advert can also appear in the sidebar of other videos and as suggested videos. When someone clicks on your advert here, it will play just as any other video would, and this is another opportunity for you to get more exposure. Likewise, your videos can also appear over the top of video homepages. So, if a user logs in and sees their recommended videos, your ad may appear above that in a similar manner to an in-search ad and they might choose to visit it. Another option to consider is that you can add captions and annotations to your videos, which can be a better way to link to external pages. This is actually a way that you can circumvent the limitations of in-search ads, as you can use these captions to link directly to landing pages or your website. Of course, this means that you can also blur the lines between your regular videos and your adverts. For instance, you could use an in-search video ad that takes visitors to your channel, and from there they might watch your video and then see some of your other videos, which include captions and annotations, linking to your landing pages or e-commerce stores. At this point, you may now be ready to pull your hair out. We've covered an awful lot and we still haven't finished explaining the ins and outs of your video ad campaign or all the various different options. You have to think about AdWords, YouTube, account settings, advert types, destinations, bidding and much more, all of which is getting pretty complicated. And now we're going to hit you with the advanced techniques which range from more advanced targeting to thumbnail creation and to ideal video length. And that's before we've even touched on the best practices for making stunning videos with high production values. Now, don't let all this scare you. It sounds like an awful lot, but once you get stuck in and try it for yourself, you should find that it's actually surprisingly self-explanatory. The first and main tip to begin with is just to dive in and start playing around with the different features. You know enough now to do that. Set a low budget and experiment with driving some traffic to your brand. Once you've done that, make yourself a strong cup of coffee and head back here for some more advanced techniques that you can use to squeeze a bit more profit and performance out of your ad campaign. When choosing your video ad, one of the most important factors to consider is how long you want to make it. The general consensus here is that shorter tends to be better. Remember that you pay for a full view if your visitors last over 30 seconds, so there's no benefit in trying to make your videos tiresomely long. Getting viewers to watch to the end of your video will give you the best chance of engaging and making an impression that leads to a sale. And statistics regularly show that shorter videos stand a better chance of being watched through to the end. Another consideration is that longer videos tend to cost you more. Now, this might come as something of a surprise, seeing as your views are supposed to be calibrated via bidding, but it all has to do with a new feature, Google's quality measure. You see, Google doesn't want advertisers to be able to ruin its search engine or video service by creating spammy videos that are poorly made and promote low-quality products. 
but they don't have time to manually vet every advert that gets uploaded. As such, the best strategy that Google has for ensuring some level of quality is to use an algorithm that attempts to gauge how good the content of your page is. To do this, it uses something called a quality measure, which basically awards better quality content. This means that you'll be rewarded with more views and lower CPV if your videos get watched all the way through, and you'll also be rewarded for shorter videos. There's nowhere in the official documentation where this is explicitly stated. However, many prominent digital marketers have run experiments to test how much YouTube ads cost at different lengths, and the results have repeatedly demonstrated that longer videos cost more. Then again, there are still some arguments in favour of longer videos. One is that longer videos might still prevent people from watching to the 30 second mark and thus get you some free brand awareness. And this is a key point to bear in mind. Even if someone skips your video, you can still show your branding, so put that right at the start. Think about it. If an ad starts playing and you notice that it's 20 minutes long, then you may be more inclined to hit skip even if you otherwise would have given it a chance. If your objective is to gain a little brand visibility and you're not bothered about direct conversions, then this can be a smart and effective strategy. Another consideration is that you can use a longer video to quickly develop more trust and engagement and to demonstrate real value. In other words, rather than relying on the viewer finding your page and looking through your content, you can hit them right away with a big definitive video explaining a topic or providing stellar entertainment that wouldn't fit into a shorter video. Again, some of this will come down to experimentation and tweaking. Try different lengths and look at your metrics to see which videos are getting watched all the way through, which are getting clicks, and which are generally offering the best ROI. As mentioned earlier, it's possible to link in search ads to any page on your website, such as a landing page or a link, by using captions. You can also do this with the other videos on your channel, and this is a great way to drive more traffic to your sales pages and increase profits. It also makes a lot of sense from a long-term content marketing perspective. In other words, you can use video ads to promote your channel and gain subscriptions, then encourage people to buy from you in your regular videos after they've had a chance to familiarize themselves with your brand and the kind of value that you're capable of delivering on a consistent basis. To do this, you need to first associate your website with your YouTube account. Now, before you do this, you won't be able to link to it, and this means you also can't link to other sites, such as using direct affiliate links. To link your YouTube account to your website, you need to first verify your account. So what you have to do is sign in, and then come here to youtube.com forward slash verify. And it's a two-step process. What they'll do, you select your country from the uh, drop-down menu, and then you need to decide how they're going to send you a verification code. They can either call you on the phone with an automated voice message, or they can text you the verification code as an SMS message. It, it's up to you, but you do have to do this by phone in most countries. So what happens then is you decide how you want to be verified, and then they will send you the verification code, which you enter into the website on the uh, two of two page here. You also need to ensure that your account is in good standing, and that means that you mustn't have breached any of YouTube's terms and conditions, which relates in particular to the use of copyrighted footage or audio. And you can find that out by going to youtube.com forward slash features once you've signed into your account. And you can see here that my account is in good standing. Okay, next thing you want to do is come over here to the left-hand side and click on the Advanced tab under Channel. And then do a page down on your computer's keyboard if you're using a PC. And then you want to look for this 
section here where it says associated website and you can then add the URL in here and click add and what will happen once you've entered that in is you'll get a, a flag here saying pending and it'll also be another box to say verify what you need to do then is click on verify and you'll be taken to the search console and here again you need to make sure that you're logged in with the same Google account and you'll need to follow further instructions to add your site to the search console you'll then be asked to choose a verification method which in most cases will mean simply adding a snippet of code to your pages that Google can subsequently detect once the verification is complete the status here will go from pending to success and you can then use an annotation to take your visitors to anywhere on your URL a few notes here first of all note when a viewer clicks on your annotation playback will stop and this will impact your watch time metrics note too if you do want to link to another destination you can always put the link in your video description which will appear underneath the video this means you could in theory link straight to an affiliate product and you can even mention in the video that the link is down below to draw attention to it you know, there are tons of options here Another way of targeting is to target a particular user interest, which is a relatively new option from Google. This lets you target people rather than videos. For instance, you might choose to look for people who watch lots of sports videos, who stay up to date with the news, or who like videos on technology. In many ways, this option is actually better than targeting the topics of videos. That's because targeting user interests allows you to look more at the long-term patterns and behaviors of visitors in order to get a better idea of who they are and even perhaps some of their statistics. Look at it this way. You've probably watched Taylor Swift videos on YouTube at some point in your life, even though you might not be the biggest Taylor Swift fan. If you were shown adverts for the new Britney album at that time, then those ads will have been wasted. It may even have been at a party, in which case no one would have seen the adverts. On the other hand, though, if you were someone who always watches video reviews for smartphones, then even when you watch a Taylor Swift video as a one-off, you might still be shown the advert for a new iPhone. This makes much more sense in the majority of cases, and it means that the ads will often be even more highly targeted. You can even get tricky and try considering how user interests might reflect demographics. For example, if you were a brand selling a car, then you might choose to look for viewers who target travel videos. Why? Because travel videos suggest that the viewer has a bigger disposable income and thus may be more likely to afford a big ticket item like a car. Conversely, you might look for someone who looks at style websites and show them videos on dating. Again, there could be some crossover in the demographics here. Did you know that you can also target a specific YouTube video? If you found content created by another user that you think is absolutely perfectly related to your subject matter, then you could use their video as a springboard to support your brand and your campaign. All you have to do is paste the URL of that video into the placement target field. The only risk here is that a single video will of course have significantly less traffic than multiple different videos spread out across the entire subject matter. Then again though, this all depends on your strategy. If you want to be as targeted as possible and to really convert a very specific niche, then you can find a video that's being watched only by the kind of person who might be interested in buying your products. Google remarketing is another advanced targeting technique which can be used with YouTube. Basically, remarketing means that you're showing adverts to people who have already shown an interest in your content. This works by storing cookies on their computers which YouTube can later use to identify them unless they clear their cookies out of the system, of course, and by looking at the user accounts of those users. 
This is great because it allows you to once again avoid people who have no interest in your content and the options available here are also quite varied, allowing you to pick very specific people to advertise to. The options here include users who have watched any of your videos before, users who have taken an action such as clicking like or leaving a comment, people who have previously viewed your videos in an in-stream ad, people who have subscribed to your channel. All these options are great and again they vary in terms of their scope and how targeted they are. Going only for people who have liked or commented will significantly limit the number of people your ads are exposed to. But these are key and crucial people because they've shown a willingness to engage with your content, to actually listen to what you're saying and to follow links. It shows much more engagement and trust if someone actually interacts with your brand versus simply watching your video, which may even have been a mistake. Obviously, there's also nothing to stop you from using multiple different marketing strategies at once to reach a broad but highly targeted audience. For example, you could opt to use remarketing for people who have liked your content, to put your ads on some specific videos, and to advertise to people with specific interests. Your thumbnail is another highly crucial element of your campaigns, and especially when it comes to in-search ads. Your thumbnail is essentially the small image that will show when your video appears in search results or suggested videos. This is also important for your general YouTube marketing strategy and for all the other videos on your account. The aim of your thumbnail is to grab attention and to stand out amongst the other videos. At the same time though, it should ideally match your other videos so that you have a consistent feel across your whole channel. This means that you might use the same font on all your thumbnails, for example. Either way, the ideal thumbnail image is going to be 1280 by 720 pixels. Make sure to at least use this ratio, which is 16 by 9 or widescreen, so that no part of your image is cropped and it should be designed to be as eye-catching and as clickable as possible. Of course, some things we find more eye-catching are more clickable than others. For example, people catch our eye easily, and especially if they look happy, successful or attractive. If your channel relates to fitness or bodybuilding, then a thumbnail featuring a guy in amazing shape might be appropriate, and the more outlandish the physique, the more this will stand out. In order for your YouTube advertising campaign to be a success, you need to ensure that you have high quality videos comprising both your channel and the adverts themselves. No matter how clever you are with your advanced organization, your bidding strategy or your targeting, your videos need to be high quality if you're going to get people to actually watch them and maybe buy your products. This is the part that can end up scaring off a lot of potential marketers. But as we'll see, it's perfectly possible to create great videos without needing the help of Steven Spielberg. In fact, if you're concerned about creating videos that feature you in front of the camera, you can actually still be successful without having to even own a camera, but we'll get to that option in a bit. Most people are going to want to create their own YouTube videos and this is going to mean going in front of the camera. So, how do you go about this? The first step, of course, is to invest in a decent camera if you can. Thankfully, most cameras these days will record in at least 1080 pixels and you shouldn't have to spend too much to get a camera that does this. Some other features worth going into include wide-angle lenses, which will enable you to include more inside the image, and the option to add an external microphone for better audio. This latter feature is particularly important if your room has poor acoustics and your videos otherwise come out echoing or quiet. Note as well that a lot of displays these days are actually higher than 1080 pixels, and this is only going to be a trend that continues. If you want to future-proof your tech and your videos themselves, then it might be worth investing in a 2K or even a 4K camera. Now you're looking at spending a fair amount of money though, which is why a good strategy for many marketers is actually to use a camera phone. Believe it or not, many camera phones actually rival dedicated camcorders these days. 
The excellent camera on the Galaxy S6 and Note 5 phones, for instance, are actually capable of recording 4K and they have excellent video stabilization and other features. Seeing as you also get a phone when you buy one of these cameras and you can get it on a monthly contract with no upfront expense, this is a great way to save money and to manage your cash flow as a solo entrepreneur. That's your hardware sorted out, but from there you also need to get some good software. In this case, that means a video editing suite such as Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas. And there are various permutations of both of these software packages ranging from top-end professional video editing suites right down to um, more consumer orientated software packages. But none of them are particularly cheap, which is why some people would choose to use the free Windows Movie Maker instead. Now, I'll be honest with you, Movie Maker is very simplistic. It doesn't really do very much. And so it's going to be worth the added investment of getting one of these other two packages. They do offer a 30-day free trial, both on uh, Adobe Premiere. You can see there's a free trial here at the time that I'm making this video. Some of the uh, Sony Vegas packages also offer a free trial as well. So you get a month to use it before you have to pay, although with both of them, some of the features are turned off so that you can't actually use them until you've got the full version. Now, another free package that is quite advanced is DaVinci Resolve. And it is a professional high-end video editing package. And you do need a top-of-the-range computer to run it on. And it can be a bit difficult to get your head around if you're not an editor, but it is actually a very good piece of software and worth thinking about if you don't want to spend the money on something like um, Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere. Now, regardless of which package you decide to go for, good editing software will let you add things like attractive transitions, video overlays, video effects, and a whole lot more. And there are a few things that you can use here to really improve the look and feel of your videos. When editing your videos, the key is to record yourself speaking for longer takes, but then to cut rapidly. Give yourself lots of footage to work with, but then don't linger on shots. You want to keep up a constant momentum. Add your logo to the video to make it look more professional and to give it a more professional feel. And cut shots of you speaking with other footage that has your voice narrating it. Videos that consist of a single person speaking in their bedroom will generally look you know, low quality and possibly even embarrassing. Adding music in the background can help you to give your video a more professional feel and ramp up the emotion to just how you want it and encourage a sale. When you do this, make sure you don't drown out your own voice and that you don't use music that you don't own the rights to. If you don't have any music to hand, then one option is to consider using a site like Fiverr.com to commission someone to write you a score. Otherwise, you can use music from a band if you know anyone musical, or you can use music that's royalty free, which means that you can use it without paying extra. Either way, making sure that your music isn't copyrighted will help you to avoid getting into trouble. Avoiding free music available through YouTube will prevent you from looking unprofessional. If you're going to be featuring in your video, then of course it's important that you look the part. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be a supermodel, but if you want to inspire trust, then you need to speak confidently and fluently, and you need to be well dressed. If you don't come across on screen as a charismatic presence, then find someone who does. You can hone your presentation skills as well by filming yourself and watching it back. And a general tip is to try speaking more slowly to avoid sounding nervous or stumbling over your words. Also important is the correct lighting. An ideal here is what's known as Rembrandt lighting, where you light your face from the side in order to create some contrasting shadows. 
You should also look into setting up your backdrop to look professional, and you should choose somewhere with good acoustics unless you're using a microphone. While the previous video showed you how to create a more traditional video where you put yourself in front of the camera and then either vlog or sell your products directly, you'll find that many digital marketers don't actually use this strategy at all. Instead, a lot of video marketing is based around videos that follow a simple script to outline the benefits of the product. These can be highly effective and they don't necessarily require you to go in front of a camera at all, or even own one. But if all that sounds like hard work, you can make videos without a camera. This video was made without a camera. One option here is to create a slideshow in PowerPoint and save this as a video file. If you don't have PowerPoint on your computer, then OpenOffice or LibreOffice Impress is a good substitute and you can get it for free. And I'll let you into a little secret. I'm using LibreOffice Impress to make the graphic slides for these videos. All you need to do then is record your voice narrating the video or add in the voice of someone else. You can find people who do voiceovers once again on Fiverr. Another option is to create an animation. This could be a whiteboard animation, a cartoon, or even a stop motion animation. Again, these can all be created yourself using specialist software or by outsourcing to a professional. Either way, what's most important is that your video is effective at grabbing attention, at holding attention and to persuading viewers to click through to your website, to subscribe to your channel or to buy your product. There are several things that you can do to accomplish this, but most important is the script and storyboard. The first thing your video has to do is to shock the user and intrigue them so that they want to keep watching. If your advert is more traditionally aimed at selling a physical product, you know, like a TV ad, then you might do this with a narrative. You know, we love stories and find it hard to look away. This story should capture the value proposition of your product, showing how it improves the lives of your users and conveying what it feels like to use it. Do this in an efficient and entertaining manner with the right music and a strong call to action at the end and you have the makings of a great ad. On the other hand, you can use a more modern digital marketing approach, which works like a script that gradually introduces the product, shows what it can do for the viewer, and then encourages them to buy quickly. Again, this can start with a narrative structure, you know, something like, I once struggled terribly with money or weight loss. Or you can start by outlining a specific problem that the viewer can relate to. You know, something like, are you tired of going on diets that never seem to lead anywhere? Either way, your main goal is to introduce a problem and then show the solution, your, your product. Meanwhile, you need to demonstrate the value proposition of your product and hopefully find a way to make it resonate emotionally with the viewer. At the same time, you need to fully explain what your product is, and this can follow a structure known as ADA. Awareness, Interest, Desire, Action. To really push that last part, the crucial action element, you need to ensure that you create urgency, and this can mean alluding to scarcity, you know, buy now while stocks last. And there you have it. Everything you need to know to start creating a highly effective YouTube video advertising campaign. It's a lot to take in, but once you get stuck in, you'll find that it's easy and actually quite fun to learn on the job. So, where do you go from here? After creating your account, the best thing to do is to try creating a simple video that sells a product by using people on Fiverr to create a whiteboard animation or by making something in PowerPoint. You can then set this up as a simple in-stream advert and link it to a sales page selling your own information product or an affiliate product. This will very quickly teach you the basics of YouTube advertising and you'll be able to learn what works and how to get set up. 
From here, you can then go about building your YouTube channel by adding more content, setting up your page, and trying out different advanced targeting options, you know, and so on. Over time, you'll find that you grow and that you're able to increase traffic to your channel and drive more conversions and profit. And as you do, keep in mind these tips to help you get even more from your efforts. Consistent branding. Keep your branding consistent across your videos and across your social media and website. Key to this is creating a great logo, and again, it's worth commissioning someone to do this if you're unsure of your own skills in that department. Make your videos discoverable. You can set your adverts to be unlisted to prevent them showing up in searches, but that's not really the best move. It makes much more sense to let people discover your content, and that way you can be seen by even more people. Watch your metrics. Keeping an eye on your metrics is the number one way to see what's working and what's not. Watch your analytics closely and tweak your videos and targeting for the best possible outcome. Match your strategy to your brand. Don't create a brand and then try to market it. Create a product with a vision for how you'll market it right at the start. This means researching niches, thinking about your current contacts and generally coming up with a synergistic plan. And of course, you should match your video to your strategy. Likewise, make sure that your video is right for its intended purpose. Decide which type of YouTube ad you'll be making before you create the video. This is important, as you'll need your video to be the right length for it to be selectable for certain types of advertising campaign. You should also watch the competition. Watching the competition closely is a great way to get an idea for what works and for the rhythm of a good video ad. Build your channel. Don't think of your YouTube ads and your channel as separate entities. Build them up together at the same time and one will support the other. Apart from anything else, having only 100 subscribers somewhat undermines your point if you're talking about your amazing internet marketing skills. There are many, many more tips and tricks, of course, but you'll learn these as you go. Time to dive in and make a start on your journey to YouTube advertising excellence.